I just read some st stuff recently and it's based on human studies and it's interesting because the same brain hormones are at play in dogs as in humans. Uh, we don't know, obviously they're not the same as us, but a lot of the chemistry is similar under stress in there. And one of the things is they've associated inability to fight or flight in humans with, uh, with uh, what we call, so there's two parts of your nervous system. There's, there's the sympathetic and the parasympathetic parts of your nervous system. And the sympathetic part of your nervous system is the one that's for action, fight, flight. It kicks in when you're in trouble, right? And the parasympathetic, generally speaking, controls a lot of involuntary function, digestion and all these sorts of things in our body. That part of your nervous system controls that. Except in certain circumstances, and one of those circumstances is if you're under extreme stress or fear and you can't escape, you shut down. Your body becomes immobile and you completely shut down. You just go catatonic. You go and I'm done, right? And so that process is governed by the parasympathetic nervous system. It kicks in when the other options of the, of the sympathetic nervous system don't work, right? And so in people, they've associated going into that state with PTSD, with post-traumatic stress disorder, right? Your inability to control the stress in your environment and either escape it or control it by moving forward and doing something about it under long-term period will shut you down and create post-traumatic stress. This fits with my uh, uh, experience with people alpha rolling dogs and stuff like that, right? So sometimes in the old days, it was like your dog showed you any lip, you make them completely give up, submit. So you put them under stress, they can't get away from you. And if you're strong enough and intimidating enough, they can't fight and win. And they go, Bleh. right? And they finally just give up and lay there like, okay, I'm done. Right? And we've seen this in other aspects of pressure training where the dog can't figure out what they need to do and they go into this shutdown phase where they just sort of like become a block and they just sit there, right? Those dogs tend to have problems with your relationship going forward. And so, again, nobody's studied this and we can't ask dog questions about their psychological well-being, but my hunch is there's some long-term psychological damage that comes from that potentially and the dog's not the same in their relationship with you and not the, probably the same chemically inside either. And so it's very important when we start talking about applying these things that the dog be able to move forward or stop it quickly because we don't want the parasympathetic nervous system kicking in when, because they think there's nothing they can do about it.